Good morning. Today I want to talk a little bit about God as a righteous God. We are going into Psalm 4, and I would like to read verse 1. It says, Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Isn't that absolutely powerful? When you pray, I think one of the most important things that you need to understand is that God is a righteous God. David prays and he says, Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. That's a very, very deep, profound place from where we can pray. We know that God is righteous. We know that he is God, and we say he is my God. He is for you. Now, I want to read the rest of the verse. He says, give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. So he comes to God, he knows that God is righteous, and the righteousness of God therefore makes room for him to be relieved from his distress. What is the greatest distress that the world is in? The greatest distress that's ever come to this world. The greatest distress is to be under the power of death and sin. And what did Jesus do? He's come to deliver us from that. That is the righteousness of God, which we're going to look at today. When we look at the definition of righteousness, it means, according to Browns, Drivers, and Briggs, uh, to do or to bring justice in administering the law. Now, many of us don't want to hear about the administration of the law. Neither do, do I want. I don't want to stand under laws and rules and regulations. Each one of us. If we take out the law of the land, we're going to find that we are guilty somewhere. doesn't matter where we are. If we take out the Ten Commandments or the Old Testament law, even the Sermon on the Mount, we're going to find that we come short somewhere. We don't want to be judged by that. Yet we find that the definition of righteousness is to bring justice in administering the law. Now, that is very, very scary if we think and if we don't understand Basically, it's scary if we don't understand the law. We need to understand the law. What is the law? What is the administration of the law? Well, there was the Old Testament law, and if you would administer that law and bring justice by administering that law, you will bring forth Jesus. Because the administration of the Old Testament law is the giving of Jesus. The Old Testament law talked about the lamb that was slain. The Old Testament law talked about the inability of man and then the lamb that God provides and so forth. So in the administration of the Old Testament law in its fullness is the manifestation of Jesus Christ. So if we pray and we say, God, you are my righteous God, what are we saying? We're talking about a God that will justify us and vindicate the cause that he has with man and he will save us. That is also one of the definitions, the Greek definitions of righteous, to justify, to vindicate, to save, to to bring freedom, to have the original cause and plan start to manifest in the lives of those who want to receive it. You know, if we think of righteousness, we can just go back to one of the devotionals I've had, and, and I'm reminded of Isaiah 1 verse 17, where it says, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless and do and plea for the widow. So judgment is about helping the oppressed. So if God is a righteous God that brings, and righteousness is to bring uh, justice into the world by applying the law, he, he has to relieve the oppressed. That is what righteousness is all about. Sadly, we've understood righteousness as being so holy that if you sin in his presence, he's going to kill you. And then you would rather have to kill Jesus, and then he would kill Jesus to somehow show his love. That is, um, how can I say, confusing is the right word. That's very confusing and it doesn't bring the heart to a place of rest. I want to say to you that the execution of righteousness is beautifully defined in Jeremiah 22 verse 3, where it says, execute judgment and righteousness and deliver those who are spoiled uh, by the hand of the oppressor. Deliver them. 
Deliver them that are under the hand of the oppressor. Don't do anything wrong. Don't do any violence to the stranger and the fatherless and the widow. Neither shed any innocent blood. Help people. That is what true justice is according to Jeremiah 22 verse 3. So if you want to execute righteousness according to the scriptures, if God is a righteous God, he has to deliver those who are spoiled, who are destroyed by the hand of the oppressor. And that is exactly what David is saying here. And I think uh, for this devotional, I want to bring this home. Carry this in your heart, what David prayed. And I read it again. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. I hope you can see how David sees righteousness as relief from distress. Relief from distress. I'm thinking of another verse, and I want to read it quickly uh, in Romans 1. It says in Romans 1, verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the good news of Jesus, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed. The gospel reveals the righteousness of God. What is a righteous person? Is somebody that brings justice by administering the law. How does the administration of the law look? God brings forth a man that can deliver people that are dying from death and give them true life. Isn't that absolutely powerful? God is righteous. So when you pray, start out this way. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God. Or you can just start out by saying, our Father, or you can say, my righteous God. And you can know there's relief from distress. God bless.